A people with an almost desperate need to celebrate. Year after year, looking for hope, looking for help. When is the hope coming? When is the help coming? When will it get better? That was the life for God's people year after year. By the thousands, they would pour into Jerusalem at the time of the Passover. Of all the feasts and celebrations, well, Passover was the big one, and they would come year after year looking for hope, hoping for the Messiah, hoping for something better to happen. Year after year, they would come, and they would end up hoping for a better position and a better life, but year after year, they would leave disappointed in the same position, still wanting the Messiah to come and relieve their suffering. But then... About 2,000 years ago, there was a gathering at the Passover that was very different because hope was coming. And it was a Palm Sunday unlike any other Palm Sunday as the Messiah had arrived and he brought hope and he brought peace with him. It's recorded in all of the Gospels. We're going to be in John chapter 12 today. John chapter 12, verses 12 through 19. And wherever you are, would you stand? Let's honor the reading of God's Word. John chapter 12, verses 12 through 19. If you don't have a copy of God's Word, they are available for you in the lobby at the information desk at Lee Park, which you cannot get into. But when you come back, we'll have lots of Bibles waiting for you. This is what the Bible says. On the next day, the large crowd who had come to the feast... They heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. They took the branches of the palm trees. They went out to meet him and began to shout, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the king of Israel. Jesus, finding a young donkey, sat on it as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. These things his disciples did not understand at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things were written of him and they had done these things to him. So the people who were with him, when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead, they continued to testify about him. And for this reason also the people went to meet him because they heard that he had performed this sign. But verse 19, the Pharisees said to one another, you see that you are not doing any good. Look, the world has gone after him. Join me as we pray together. God, thank you for this truth. And thank you for the time we have together to look at your word and to learn from it. And God, as we do not know what it was like to suffer as long as God's people, we do know what it is like, though, to ask where is help and where is our hope? Let us find it today in your word. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. I want to remind you that coming up on Friday is a Good Friday service that we're going to do here at Lee Park. I don't know that we've done one of these before, but this Friday at 3 o'clock, we'll go online with a Good Friday service. The significance of 3 o'clock, for some people, they think that is the time when Jesus died. And it will be the time when we go uh, online with our Good Friday service. I hope that you'll be able to join us for that. Driving around Monroe is odd. You'd go by some places and there's nobody. You know the Golden Corral down 74 off to the left? Nobody in there. Off to the right, you've got Lowe's and there are people everywhere. The parking lot is packed. There's not a lot of moving in and out. You got Lowe's, you've got Sam's Club, you got that same situation. Not a lot moving in and out because you can't all go in at once. There are only so many people allowed in. And then when you try to check out, you have to be six feet apart. So you drive by, it's an odd look to see people with masks and people standing at a distance and people out in lines and some parking lots full and other, full and other parking lots, there's nobody in it at all. It just looks odd. That's the world we're in now. There's the daily death toll that goes out, and it's sad, and it's alarming. There's fear all around. We're moving into this time of celebration for the church, but we move into this time with such uncertainty and fear. But on this day, I want to take you back to a day 2,000 years ago, and I want to talk about our hope in Palm Sunday. And there is still hope. 
in Palm Sunday. There's hope in this Palm Sunday. The talk of the Messiah was growing. There was sort of this something that was coming up among the people of Jerusalem. And it was a, a hope, maybe a little bit different than in years past because of the conversations about this specific Messiah and the specific things that he had done. And there was this growing hope and desire. Did he really raise Lazarus from the dead? Was he really helping people? Was he really healing people? Was he really feeding people? Will he really be there? Well, we should celebrate. The first thing we see from the text I want to share with you is the praise of Palm Sunday. In verses 12 and 13, the crowds gathered, this excitement was building, the palm branches were waving, the shouts went up, Hosanna. Matthew and Mark record Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna meaning help us and save us and God from the highest places send the Messiah to help us. In the 118th Psalm, they started repeating that. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. God, are you sending the Messiah? Is this him? Interesting thing. Normally, Jesus, we see in the text, would stay away, avoid, even shun this type of public praise. But here, he does not shun it. He does ride in on the donkey in what ended up being sort of a, 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 an impromptu parade. As Christ came and the palm branches waved, he did not stay away from them cheering and, and welcoming him. Why? He knew he was the king. And this was his time. He was God's plan and he knew it. He was the Messiah and he knew it. This celebration was recognized by the Pharisees, although they were not pleased. In one of the other gospel accounts of this in Luke's gospel, chapter 19, verse 39 and 40, the Bible says this, some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, teacher, rebuke your disciples. But Jesus answered, I tell you, if these become silent, the stones will cry out. This was a time, even though Jesus did stay away from these public praises at this moment, he knew it had to happen. This was God's plan, and it deserved to be celebrated. He is God's plan, submitting to the will of the Father. God now in flesh, reason to celebrate. And if you call yourself a Christian, the call on you today is also to praise him. He is your God, praise him. He is your Messiah, praise Him. He is your Savior, praise Him. No matter what's going on, you praise Him. He is worthy of your praise. The Bible is filled with this. In Acts chapter 2, as the early church starts to form, Christ has come back, the gospel is being spread, and the Bible says in Acts 2 that they gathered together and they praised Him. Then as the church starts to spread out, the Gentiles come to faith in Christ. In Acts chapter 16, Paul and Silas end up in prison because they're sharing the gospel. And the Bible says they praised him. In Hebrews chapter 3, as the church now is starting to form and develop, congregations are coming together. And in Hebrews chapter 3, it says we will sing our praise in the congregation. And in Hebrews chapter 13, we see why. Because it says, through Christ, we continually praise God. In every situation, we praise God. Celebrating with our friends in prison, we praise God. With the congregation, however large or small the congregation is, we praise God. I've been getting some... Some messages sent to me with videos of what it will look like when we get back to church. Of pastors running down the aisle, high-fiving everybody, of people dancing and celebrating. And I hear all the time, oh, what it will be like when we get together. Oh, and I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to see it. Will it be fun? Yeah, it'll be fun. I watch those videos and what it's like when we are all together. And I think about what it'll be like when we all get together again and how much fun that will be. But it doesn't stop us from praising Him now. I'm also encouraged by what I see you doing with sharing these messages and, and sharing information about how good God is and, and sharing praises. I love that. And we have to keep doing that. 
There's enough depression in the world and there's enough sadness in the world, rightly so, because of what is happening. But in that, we as Christians must continue to share the hope of Christ. We as Christians must continue to praise Him because He is worthy of our praise. And if we don't, the rocks will. Here's the second thing we see in the text. We see the praise of Palm Sunday. We also see the peace of Palm Sunday. As a part of this celebration, there was the expectation of revolution, right? The Messiah was supposed to come in power, and in his power, he was supposed to lead the revolution over the Romans so the Jews could return to their power and return to their position. That's what was supposed to happen, right? That's what they were looking at. The, the things that they are saying in, 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 in verse 15, quoting Zechariah 9, 9, the king is coming. In, in verse 17, some of them are, are talking about Lazarus being raised from the dead. Clearly, this man has power. And if he has power to raise from the dead, if he is the king who is coming, it's time for us to rise up against the Romans. But I want you to catch this. The palm branches, not just a symbol of victory, they were a symbol of peace. The donkey that Jesus rode in on was a symbol of peace. I want you to catch this. The power of Palm Sunday was the offering of peace. Jesus knew what he was riding into. He knew this donkey symbolized peace, the palm branches symbolizing peace. He knew what he was riding into. He knew what the timing was. The Passover celebration, the time when God's people would, would gather and they would remember their freedom and that they were taken out of slavery and that the wrath of God passed over them. The angel of death passed over them because of the blood of the lamb on their doorposts. The blood of the lamb offering that temporary peace between man and God. So the angel of death would pass over. God's people were set free. Jesus now is the ultimate offering of peace. Jesus comes and he rides into this donkey so that he can offer himself for peace. Today, people are looking for peace with God. They are. A recent survey came out, Faithwire, this is a pretty new survey that came out that asked people about how they're dealing with this spiritually. Here's what we found out. We found out that 21.5% of non-Christians have started to read the Bible, listen to biblical teaching, and listen to Christian sermons online, even though they said that is not something they would do. They've started having conversations with people about Christ, about things like Christian prophecy. The discussions are taking place. A growing number of non-Christians are now paying attention. It also says that 40.1% of Christians now are reading their Bible more than ever. Praise be to God. Why? Because they want peace. 44% of Americans say this is a wake-up call to turn back to God. Praise God. It's a wake-up call for us to turn back to God and reminded of who He is. And I hope you are doing that today. I hope you're reading your Bible more than ever. But I hope you recognize that he is your peace. Are you looking for peace with God? Are you a Christian who needs peace? Are you a non-Christian who needs peace? Did you know this? Did you know that the peace offering was first offered from Christ to you? Did you know that he offered you peace? Even though that you are at war with God in your sin, Christ came not to make war with you, but to make peace. In fact, we see this in John chapter 14, verse 27. Look at what Jesus says. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled. Do not let it be fearful. Did you know you can have peace with God today? You may not feel settled. You may feel unsettled and worried and troubled and fearful. Don't you want peace Aren't you ready for peace? The only way you can truly have peace is to have peace with God. And the good news is he's offering peace to you today. He is the most powerful. He is the ultimate. He is everywhere. He's not limited at all. And yet his offering to you is not war. His offering is peace. 
His offering to you is not fear, it's not trouble, it's peace. And Jesus came and offered himself as your peace offering to a holy God. And it was acceptable and pleasing because his life was perfect. Don't you want peace? Don't you feel like you need peace today? Christ has made the first move. He's offered you peace. There's the peace of Palm Sunday. And lastly, I want you to see the promise of Palm Sunday. Religious leaders did not see this as such a time of excitement. They saw this as a threat. And we saw at the very last verse we read in verse 19, they wanted him stop. They wanted him stopped. They, they had a plan to get this taken care of. Jesus, again, knew these things were going on. This was not a surprise to him. He knew it was time. He's riding in. He knows it's time. In fact, in Luke's gospel, as it records this, it says in Luke 19, 41, that when Jesus approached Jerusalem, he saw the city and he wept over it. He knew that much of the cheering that he was getting would soon, would soon turn on him. So why would, knowing what Jerusalem would go through after, knowing that Jerusalem would continue its, its um, history of killing prophets, knowing all of these things and knowing that these same people waving branches would soon be raising their fists that he'd be crucified, Jesus weeps over this. Why does he do it then? Why does he ride in? Well, it's because he knows everything. He knows the promise of God. He knows that God has promised to offer salvation to his people. He knows that even though man has separated himself from God and God's holiness, he knows that before the foundation of the world, because Jesus was there, before the foundation of the world, there was a plan to reunite God and man. And Jesus is the key. There's a promise that God made to send a Messiah. There's a promise that God made to you to send a Messiah. There's a promise that God made to you to rescue you. There's a promise that God made to you to forgive you of your sins. That promise that God made to you, he kept every promise. Jesus makes a promise to you that through grace alone, by faith alone, if you receive Christ alone, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. God's promise to you through Christ the Son is that you will be saved. Just like that. That you will be saved. He made the promise to you of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. God not just around you, God not just with you, but God in you. And he kept that promise. God has also made you this promise that he will come again and he'll keep that promise too. The promise of Palm Sunday for us now is all of the kept promises of God and now the command on us and the call on us and the charge on us to then go out and live that promise out. Live out the promise of a new life. Live out the promise of hope in Christ. Live out the promise of salvation. Live it out in your life so that others can see. What great opportunity for us as Christians to live it out. It's so simple now to share your faith. Just simply share a post that your preacher preaches from your church. Just share it. Let people see it. There's other ways you can do it too. I want to show you a picture of the Sides family. You know, we've been feeding people, as Becky mentioned. Our, our, our church people have been so active in calling people and feeding people. Here's the Sides family. They went to uh, CMC Union. They went there and delivered a bunch of Hathaway's chicken to the people there, our medical professionals who were there. What a great gift. What a great joy for a pastor to see that happen. And now it's stepping up that others will do the same thing. And, and, and maybe you're ready now to get connected with the church. You know, we don't, we can't, you can't come and join like we normally do now, but maybe you're ready to get connected with the church. And you're not getting the Lee Park emails because you're, you're not a Lee Park member. You know what? I don't want that to keep you from being connected to the church. I want to give you an email address. ChrisJustice at LeeParkChurch.org. ChrisJustice at LeeParkChurch.org. We want to get you connected. You want all the information that's going on, all the things we're doing. You want to help. You want to be involved. Great. We've already got a, a restaurant that's willing to come together and work with us. Gino's Restaurant in Marshville is willing to come together and work with us to make sure that our medical professionals at CMC Union get a good Friday meal. A good, good Friday meal. And, and if you want to help, if you want to be a part of helping, then let's do it together. 
What a great time for the church in communities all over the country. What a great time for the church to be actively involved in helping our community. Certainly we must do that now, right? Certainly we must do that now. We are the living promise of Christ. We are the manifestation of God's promise to humanity. We are the saved that God had planned. You are. You're the saved that God had planned. And now let's live out that promise. You have the opportunity to do it now to the glory of God. He is worthy of the praise because he has offered us peace and he has kept his promise. Praise be to God. Do you join me as we pray? Father, thank you for keeping your promises. Thank you that we are children of the promise. And for those who may be watching today and they're ready to have peace with God, you will keep your promise as they confess their need to you, repent of their sins before you, accept the peace offering that you give. God, as they do that, we celebrate with all of heaven as another promise is kept and your saving power is administered. And so as people call out to you and simply say, Lord, I don't understand everything. I don't, but I do understand this, God. I need you. I need you to come into my life and change my life and save my life and make me new. And God, I'm trusting you will keep your promise and you will rescue me because I believe in you. God, thank you for loving us the way you do. In Jesus' name, amen. You want to be a part of what's happening? We want you to be a part. We want you to be connected. Email me, chrisjustice at leadparkchurch.org, and let's get you connected. As we get ready to leave today, Pastor Sam has a great song for us as people contemplate the decisions they're making in their life. Have a great week.